tēnā koutou katoa. Welcome to uh, Owen Delaney Park in beautiful Taupo in Aotearoa, New Zealand for the New Zealand Ultimate Secondary School Championship Open Game. Um, uh, today we've got Takapuna uh, Grammar uh, playing Hillcrest High in, in the uh, Open Division. Uh, Cor Marco and um, with me doing the play-by-play analysis is uh, New Zealand Ultimate Legend Mike Sheridan. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark. Yes. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're looking forward to a great game here today uh, with these two teams. Of course, uh, Takapuna uh, Grammar from Auckland and Hilkris High from Hamilton. The conditions today are... Uh, gosh, it looks great on the screen, doesn't it, Mark? Um, it, it does. Owen Delaney's a beautiful complex, named after um, Owen Delaney who started cricket back here in, in, I think, 53, started rugby in, in 54, and um, I think he ended up with an OB, OBE, but for 30, 40 years of devotion to sport. And there's a lot of people around, even Ultimate, who have um, devote so much of their time and energy um, to help drive a sport. They do, they do indeed. If we look at the weather conditions today, it looks great on the screen, so the sun is shining. It's uh, it always is in Taupo. Every event we've had here in Taupo for the last 10 that I've been to, it's been sunny. The unusual thing today is the wind. Uh, the wind today, is, it has died down a little, but I would say it's still blowing uh, 30 k's an hour out there. You can see the, the, the wind, yeah, look at it in the trees there. And if you look at the players' shirts, see how the players' shirts are uh, billowing in that wind? Uh, it, it is windy. So on our screens, it's going to be blowing from right to left. Um, and, and it's going to have a huge impact on the game today. If you've been watching the previous games, you'll notice that the, the wind does have a huge impact. So we'll see what these two teams bring out. And there's the hooter for the start of the game. Um, for those of you that don't know, and forgive me if you are a, uh, an, an avid watcher of Ultimate, I'll run through some of the rules and some of the idiosyncrasies of the sport that might be unusual to new Farnell and friends that are uh, watching the game. So you can see the, the yellow team on the right is the Takapuna Open team and they are pulling the disc and they have uh, kicked the disc off if you like with the blue team um, Hillcrest High receiving. So Hillcrest High trying to sort of move the disc they are throwing into the wind so that's going to be quite challenging ca challenging for for you and that's a turnover um, that wind pick that disc up you'll notice oh there's another turnover from the uh, the Takapuna team so <coughs> the interesting thing about this game is the Hillcrest High team are playing what we call Savage so ultimate uh, at this division is five aside. Uh, so Hillcrest High are playing with no subs. They're playing with the same five players all tournament, which is huge. Four games today with five players playing. So they've done well to get that disc off the line and did some good centering passes to try and uh, move that disc forward. The disc goes back to uh, Takapuna on that right left hand uh, touch line you can see the the important lines to watch here it does get confusing um, to see the lines uh, the blue lines so the blue lines are outlining our field so you'll notice that every time because they've got no subs every time that the disc does get turned over or that Hillcrest High are uh, in possession of the test disc they'll be taking their time to get the disc back in that's number 19, Will Hamilton, who's one of the key players uh, in the Hillcrest team. Centering the disc back. Nice turnover by uh, Takapuna. And Takapuna in a handy position here, right on the goal line. They'll be trying to convert this into uh, into points, or a point. Number six there, throwing that across the field. That was Archie Somerville Ryan. Lovely defence there in the corner by uh, Finn Collins from uh, Hillcrest. You notice he just pushed that disc into the ground, forcing the turnover. 
He's in a difficult position there, right in the corner, though, to try and get the disc out of that corner. You notice that um, well, he's managed to get it nicely. And there was, a, there was a foul called by Will there, saying that the opposition player did uh, make contact, but the disc is resumed, play is resumed. Trying to organise his players to uh, get into a good receiving position. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a fake throw from Finn. You notice that uh, throwing into the wind, what the wind will do is it will push the disc down. Um, so you will see the, the huge influence that the wind is having on this game. That's a good throw by Finn if it comes back in. And it is coming back in. Nicely caught by uh, Tane, Tana. Pick your pardon, Tana. Um, so they make some good position. Field position is what uh, is very important in, on a, a day like today. Um, playing the field in the right space. So number six, uh, I think that's Archie uh, Somerville Ryan that's on the mark there from Atakapuna. And you notice he's trying to stop the disc coming towards the camera. So he's pinned the, uh, the opposition player against the, 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 uh, the line. Back to Finn Collins, who is centering it into the middle. Lovely catch, one-handed catch in the air. Back to Finn Collins, and Finn is looking to score, and, and he does. What a fabulous throw into the win by Finn, and his receiver is number one, Tana. Tana Jules. Giles? Giles, I believe. Giles, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was a great score into the corner, and a great score by uh, Hillcrest High. Jamming that throw into the corner, making good use of, uh, you know, how, how slow and deliberate they were with their throws. There was no excess energy expended because they've got no subs, don't forget. And they're in an advantageous position now, scoring the first point uh, into the wind. So there'll be a Kume now, a pull down downwind, and it um, and they'll then have to walk, work back into the wind. They will, yes, indeed, and a good good throw miles into the air, lands just into the end zone. Number ten, lovely catch by Harry uh, Tuisila, and good run through D by um, Nico Bula. We're playing to the uh, 15 today, aren't we, with a half-time as soon as one team hits eight? Yes, the, 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 yes that, that's correct. The, uh, the game is 2.15, to to the so the first to 15, uh, the game finishes. Unless we reach the time cap. So the, the time cap is 50, 50, 50 minutes, minutes. 50 minutes today. And, and we'll, we'll talk more about that later as we get towards 50 uh, minutes about what happens then. Uh, so nice score by uh, number 11, I think it yep, was. Yep, Tahi. Thank you. Uh, by Takapuna Grammar. So that, that, that's one all. Um, one of the things that I've been involved with uh, Schools Ultimate for many years, uh, mostly in the Wellington area, but also in the, uh, involved in the U20 programs, but one of, one of the great things as a, as a, as a parent and a teacher is, is that no referees. So you'll notice there's no referees in white or, or black and white strip or whatever, uh, blowing a whistle or, or telling the play, players when it was out or when it was in or when a foul was made. This, this is one of the huge things about Ultimate that makes it such a, uh, a great sport to both participate in a and as as parents, especially to have your your uh, your children out there making taking responsibility of what's happening on the field, to making their own calls. So we'll, we'll talk about that further as as examples come to light. So Takapuna Grammar are pulling the distance. A very good pull into the wind, making it just about all the way down to the end zone. Um, and lovely pick up there by. It was. I didn't see who that was. Number seven. 
Hugo, Hugo Sweetman. But the disc is back with Hillcrest now with uh, Finn Collins. I suspect we'll have uh, Finn in the highlighted quite a lot. Finn and his compatriot there, Will, will be doing most of the handling, most of the heavy work at the back. So you can see there, number 11, he crossed his arms and called a foul. He, I, I th so that, that's the visual sign that uh, crossing your arms together and calling a foul. He's actually said that uh, the, the person marking him hit him, I imagine, as he tried to release. The person on the other side, uh, number 16, is it? That's a slow motion there. So number 16, Lewis Campbell, is having a discussion. He doesn't think that a foul was cool, was, was appropriate. And they've asked for commentary from the rest of the team. And if a foul is accepted, then it's a... Uh, turnover uh, so number 11 is saying that there's no no contest there so a foul stands so the disc is retained by Hillcrest um, so both players are accepting it that uh, Finn was fouled lovely throw up the line there Is out. One of the players saying, "Yes, that was caught out, unfortunately." So um, the uh, the Takapuna player now gets to bring it up to the uh, the end of the end zone to retain play, resume play. I know saying that the disc went out, in fact, further back. So number fourteen is saying, uh, Connor Williams is saying that the disc went out right back there. He's trying to bring that disc back in. Um, Unfortunately, the disc didn't come back in after he threw it. So uh, this possession back to Hillcrest, back where the disc went out, which is right back where uh, the throw was made. So Hillcrest uh, came and Matarua up by two over um, over Takapuna, but um, it's certainly out of the three games we've had today that, that <laughs> playing upwind has been um, the most secure. Oh, nice. Yes, and that, that's interesting, isn't it? That Hillcrest have scored uh, two of their three goals upwind uh, with just steady play, pushing that, that disc further and further up the play. And you can see there an, another goal, goal scored by Hillcrest, thrown by um, Will and scored by, I think it was um, number 11, Finn Collins. So I know Finn Collins, he travelled to Poland last year with the New Zealand under-20 team. So he's a New Zealand representative. Still at school. And I know that he has been selected for the New Zealand under-24 team, which I think is going to play in Birmingham this year. So both Finn and Will are playing for the Hamatron Club in um, Hamilton. Getting lots of experience there. Throwing that disc high into the air. It's gone right out the back, and you'll see um, Harry Tuolasi to a seat to a sealy to a sealer. <laughs> Thank you, pardon. Uh, put Razor's hand in the air to signal that the disc went out. He's going to bring the disc all the way out to the X in the middle of the field. Uh, the, the actual terminology for it is it is a, a called a brick. So you want to get that disc on a pull as far down as you possible, but don't throw it out. So Takapuna oh, nearly, re nearly managed to recollect that disc, but um, didn't quite manage to do that. So Hillcrest slowly coming back up to control the play again. Number 11, Finn Collins again, looking across the field to his reset. Looking for options downfield. And the, what happens in the wind when you're throwing with the wind is the, the disc can bobble quite a lot. And it's actually, it, it looks easy from here to, uh, to catch that disc, but the wind is pushing that disc up and down the whole time. Um, so it's actually harder than it looks to throw in the wind. Uh, 
good players. Make it look easy, of course. Good throw by um, Hugo Sweetman across to the sideline. Just being pushed out across to the camera side of the sideline by the wind. Mike, both players are, are running a vertical stack, are they? Yes, yes. A, a good, good question, Mark. So what we tend to do is, um, so by vertical stack, we mean that all the uh, offensive players, so at the moment uh, Hillcrest has got the disc, so there's two players at the back, and the other three players are lined up down the field. That gives lots of space for them to cut out to either side of the field. So you can see the three cutters at the back trying to cut to either side. Finn, he's pushed that quite long. Lovely touch of the disc by uh, Harry to a sealer, um, forcing the turnover. Harry uh, keeps the disc on the back of the end zone, on the front of the end zone, looking to sort of move that disc by Takapuna back up the field. So Takapuna aren't quite as disciplined with their, their line of uh, players um, in that vertical stack. Uh, crammed quite closely to the disc, going into the wind, perhaps not trusting their throws just as, uh, as much. And uh, the open player right at the back scores nicely. Uh, that's uh, Tana, Tana Giles. Scoring in the uh, the back of the end zone. Throw by, so that was uh, Finn noticing the space in the back. And you just caught it in. So if it's uh, the, if the disc is, if the feet are on the line, ooh, <laughs> maybe that disc is uh, somewhat marginal, but it's up to the players to call that. Uh, we certainly can't call it from here about whether it was in or out. Um, if one foot is on the line and both feet are on the ground, that uh, theoretically is out. Uh, but uh, was what the players say goes, so that was in, and that was another goal. So Hillcrest, 4-0 uh, up. Have uh, certainly played well with the wind. And timeout has been called by Takapuna. So I imagine the coach on the field is uh, getting the Takapuna team together and perhaps looking at their strategy. Mike, thinking of playing in these conditions, and I mean, that for, for those that haven't played alternate, they may remember you know, throwing a frisbee around and normally backhand. We've got a backhand and a, a, a forehand, a mamuri and a mamua in, in, in ultimate. Um, and most of us are used to, as we grew up, a backhand. And it's normally on a, on a beach or in a park in, in, in nice static conditions. Um, but there's a lot of variables that really um, will result in turnovers, tukus, like, like we've seen. Although, actually, given the conditions, I think there's very few. We've got defensive players, but also the, what, are, what are some of the conditions that would add to that? Yes, yeah, so uh, as an offensive player, you do need to be able to throw both ways. So backhand, is that, that is, as you say, is the throw that we all learn when we're young and we uh, throw on the beach. Quite easy to pick up. But we need to be able to throw out the other side as well. So the, the way that we throw a ball, if you like, we call it a forehand throw. Um, if you can only throw one direction, you're quite disadvantaged because the marker can then uh, cut that uh, mark to, so that you can't throw that backhand. Um, the rules ab about um, ultimate are the same as uh, netball. Once you catch this, you've got to come to a stop and then you can only pivot. So you can pivot to throw forehand or you can pivot to throw backhand. So yes, you do need to be at this level. You do need to be uh, proficient with both throws. There's a third throw that is often used called a hammer, which is an overhead throw. Very difficult to make in these conditions. We, we probably won't see any throws like that today. It's just too windy. So each point you'll notice that, uh, that there is a, a change in direction just so that no one team gets the advantage of the wind. So every, every goal, the two teams swap over as to uh, which way they're throwing. 
So Hillcrest had a good advantage of them. Good turnover. Didn't manage to take advantage of it. But um, Jacopuna and Grammar have uh, played for good territory there. They've pushed uh, Hillcrest right back onto the, uh, their end zone. And a day like today, I think that's a good strategy to uh, mm. play for territory. Mm. May not look as good. Uh, you don't see as many completed passes, but um, I think it's it's a, a good way to play. And in fact, we have been uh, <laughs> I have been um, encouraging the two teams that I'm uh, helping with to play for territory. So number eleven, there uh, Finn um, threw a dummy throw or a uh, didn't quite manage to get the throw away. Pinned back nicely, but uh, got the disc away, and he's got a good backhand throw but uh, nicely knocked down by Takapuna Grammar. What's Takapuna Grammar now going to do now? They've pushed all their players downfield again and looking for territory yet again. So I think the coach has said, don't play the game in your half, guys. Let's push the disc down there and hope for a turnover. Trust your defence and hope for a turnover down in the, uh, the hillcrest part of the, the field. See, they're lining up in that vertical stack again. But if we look at the defensive player, quite often, um, just to add an extra uh, <laughs> difficulty to, to, to pass, the defensive player will quite often mark on one side and try and cut off that backhand and force the player forehand, won't they? They, they will. So there are many, many different uh, strategies. Um, most of the defensive strategy that we are playing here is man on man. But you'll see at the moment in the downfield stack, they are doing a bit of a swap. And that, yeah, that defensive strategy forced the turnover. So Hillcrest looking good on attack here. And yes, lovely goal by, um, sorry, not Hillcrest, by Takapuna Grammar. Um, Tacoma Toru, 13. Yeah, Nick Mansell scoring there in the corner. So you would have to say that their strategy of playing for territory paid off there. That they forced a couple of turnovers down in the uh, close into the, uh, the red zone, as it were, or the attack zone and quickly converted that into a goal. So they'll be very pleased with that. Um, the throw yeah, from um, Harry to a, to a Sealy, to a Sealer, <laughs> um, was uh, nicely converted into the corner. So we'll see if uh, what happens now with Takapuna. Now they're on the board after 20 minutes, uh, throwing into the wind now and see what their strategy is defensively throwing into the wind. Uh, just re reaches about halfway, which is uh, pretty jolly good for this wind. Uh, just you can see a big gust came up just then. Again, Hillcrest just sauntering up to the disc, establishing a, a pivot, looking to move that disc downfield in their own good time, not being rushed. Position back with uh, Takapuna. A oh, lovely forehand throw there. So the forehand throw managed to sort of advance the, I think that was by Jamie Moss, advancing the, the disc down the other sideline. However, Hillcrest have managed to sort of get the disc again. Uh, and you'll see those two players in the back. We call those two players at the back handlers. Usually, oh, what a fantastic defensive move that was. Mm, tight. Pushing that disc. Yeah, thank you very much, Harry. That, that, that was a, a great turnover, pushing the disc. <laughs> We're obviously seeing him um, play a lot. Unfortunately, the, the, uh, the wind caught that disc and pushed it away. So when there is a turnover in the end zone, the offensive team get position at the start of the end zone. Um, so Hillcrest to be happy there. That's uh, another point to them, 5-1, that uh, they managed to pin down Takapuna Granite into the corner, and Takapuna couldn't quite get it out of there. So they had a couple of turnovers, a couple of options, a couple of opportunities, but um, Hillcrest will be very happy. 
I think what we're seeing here, Mark, is the experience of, of, of the two players that do play in an adult league in Hamilton, Finn and Will, uh, in the, Hill, the Hillcrest team. Although they have no subs, they're uh, certainly playing to their strengths. Yeah, good smart play having, having played at that higher level. Um, actually seen some of the kids playing here who are playing in the um, either Division 1 or Division 2 National Champs last weekend down in Christchurch um, where teams have um, grabbing that young and upcoming talent. Yes, uh, wise clubs will uh, will be watching some of these games and looking at, at the, the youth players of today who are the senior players of tomorrow uh, and uh, hopefully talent spotting about which players they can be <laughs> looking to uh, incorporate into their, uh, their adult, adult club teams. And it doesn't hurt to have young legs. It's yes. Actually, uh, what amazes me, it's an, the aerobic fitness that's needed for a sport like this. If you think, if you watch out there and you look at the players defending, um, if, if they've got a defensive player, they want to lose that player. So they will take off at full speed, either take them downfield or cut to and constantly on the move. And it's, you know, we talk about that some of the rules are similar to netball. This is a much bigger field. Yes, the, the, the field is there's 50 metres long uh, between the end zones and 25 metres uh, wide. And the end zones are uh, 10 metres long. So that's uh, 70 metres of, of uh, depth of field. I see some lovely footwork there by uh, Finn Collins scoring into the um, end zone. Yes, aerobic fitness is, uh, is very, very important in, in this game. Um, there was talk downstairs earlier that in your the beat test record that you set in your heyday has actually not been broken. No. <laughs> yeah, that, that was quite some years ago now, Mark. Uh, <laughs> Even better. <laughs> quite some years ago, and I've, I've, that le legend has lived on. Uh, I think it was 18 I scored. <laughs> Um, it's interesting, so, in, in, so that was back in the, uh, I think it was 1991, for those interested in uh, the history of the game, over 30 years ago that I was playing the game. Uh, played, a, it was quite a different game uh, back in my day. <laughs> um, the, a lot less players in the squads and a lot greater emphasis on uh, endurance uh, fitness. Uh, the game has uh, changed quite a lot over the last few years uh, a lot greater emphasis now on speed agility and skill so um, and you can see that that's how Hillcrest are actually playing they they are playing a skilled game relying a lot less on running around like mad things and relying on their their key handers at the back um, and if they can easily find space without having to try exhaust the player that's defending on them, um, they can conserve a lot of energy, particularly with that number of players and the number of games they're playing. With no they? subs, yes, yeah. yes. Now, if I was the um, opposition coach and was uh, had the ability, um, I, I, I would be uh, certainly encouraging... Um, when we have the opportunity to run around the Hillcrest team as much as possible to try and tire them out. Mm. Um, because uh, at the moment, uh, Hillcrest, what they're doing is they are controlling the, the tempo of the game. They are slowing things down. Um. So a nice, easy goal. No, what was called there? I'm not sure what... what what was called there, but um, perhaps they started the game too early. The guest disc, there was a stoppage there that was called. The disc needs to. Be, I didn't see what it was, unfortunately. Stoppage was called. wasn't checked back in. Disc is checked back in by uh, Connor Williams. <laughs> and rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> yes, they uh, saw saw it was going to work, <laughs> and they they repeated. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the stat sheets after the game about how much uh, Finn and Will have dominated the, the game. Um, and you, you can just see the experience uh, of, of those two players. Yeah, very familiar with playing with each other. Well drilled. Yes. Good skills. So there are, there are strengths and weaknesses, of course, with having, having to play um, 
having to play Savage. And, and one of the strengths is you get to know your players about uh, who, who's doing what. And you get to run your, uh, your, your, uh, your drills and your game plan over and over again with the same players. Uh, Takapuna have got a, a squad of 10 players, so they're able to sort of bring on substitutes. You can see the disc went out on the full there again, so we're coming back into the X on the, uh, to, for the disc to uh, start again. Um, uh, and, a, and a turnover there. Again, just sauntering up to the disc, slowing it down, waiting for his player to cut. Cut nicely. That was a good cut into open space, but didn't quite read the disc uh, with that wind. Oh, and lo and behold, I think that Takapuna coach must have been listening to me. <laughs> uh, playing for uh, position territory have uh, put the disc back down into the Hillcrest corner, hoping that uh, Hillcrest uh, turn that disc over down there. So defence is forcing a forehand. Yep. And of course there's a defensive player not only just on the, on the handler, but on the cutter as well. Uh, yes, very good uh, weighted throw into the wind. That was uh, three quarters of the length of the field. The, um, but nicely, uh, the Takapuna team nicely boxed, at, boxed out uh, Hillcrest from taking the disc in. And again, Takapuna, oh, lovely catch by, I think that's Archie Somerville Ryan again on the sideline there. It was, a, it was a difficult disc to catch. Oh, a push pass, that's called. And you can see that uh, number 11, Finn, on the opposition team was uh, patting his head. That's the signal for a stall. Um, so there's no time clock that indicates how long you have to play with the disc. The time clock is you have 10 seconds, but the, the time is measured by the person marking you. They have to count from uh, 1 to 10. And if you get to 10, it's a turnover. If, you, if the opposition player marking you doesn't do any counting, then there is uh, no, you've got all day. Hillcrest again looking to score in that corner. Oh, lovely throw. But, oh, couldn't quite sort of pull that in and drift it out. Good attempt by uh, Jamie Moss there in that corner. Uh, the disc was, he was trying to sort of tow it in. But uh, didn't have a hope in the end because the, the wind pushed it out. Um, so that, that signal there with the hands across the head is an injury signal. So Jamie, uh, when he fell there trying to sort of tow that disc in, uh, twisted his ankle or something. So he's called an injury and, and has subbed out. Hillcrest pushed right back into the end zone. This is a good opportunity for Takapuna Grammar to take advantage. Oh, lovely grand run through D opportunity. It didn't quite sort of pay off there in the end by uh, Harry. Hillcrest managing to sort of get out. Oh, <laughs> a lovely fake by Finn. Pushing it up the line. Didn't quite manage to sort of pull that down. And in the end, a good intercept by uh, Takapuna. Pushing it back into the end zone. Rust out the back end. The wind captured that and pushed it out the back. I think that was the other number. Six. Oh, I might have had. There's two number sixes on the uh, on the field. I oh, know that was um, again Harry to a sealer. He seems to be the uh, the main uh, handler for Takapuna Grammar. He's been on most of the time. Again, the first cutter you will see often the, the, the play that uh, Hillcrest are making is the first cutter is number one. Tana. He's the player that's doing most of the movement. And Harry's got that disc again and, and he's going to push it back down into the end zone. Yeah, so that that's good strategy. May not look pretty, but it is keeping the disc in the right 
part of the field for Takapuna. Those of you that have just tuned in, the uh, the wind is blowing. It's still uh, it, hard for us to tell in the commentary box. We're nicely sheltered here. But it was throwing about 30 k's an hour uh, earlier on. Uh, just looking at their shirts. Oh, yeah, look at those trees. That, that <laughs> That's still windy. <laughs> that's still windy out there. Uh, this morning, oh, it was bitter. You could see snow on the mountains this morning. Nice, fresh... Uh, bit of snow fell here, not here, but uh, on the mountains locally uh, yesterday and last night. Very cold this morning, bitter. But it's warmed up with the sun coming out. I uh, stripped down from five layers. I think I've only got three layers on now. Uh, so two hands in the air that um, Hillcrest managing to score another upwind point. Uh, they've said that was in. And I think that should... Uh that's that's that scored the eight, which should uh, trigger the halftime break. Gosh, is that is that eight eight already? Is it? Yes. Okay, that, that's that's fantastic for uh, t uh, for Hillcrest. They'll be very happy with their performance. So it'll be interesting to see uh, at halftime. Um, I don't think you'll see much change from Hillcrest. They've got a set strategy of, of using their two handlers uh, and and just playing to their strengths. Interested to see what uh, Takapuna can come back with in the second half. Yes. All right, well, we'll head to that breakdown for half time and see you back in a few minutes. From us, it's a huge thank you to New Zealand Carbon Farming. Certainly, the, the opportunities and the sponsorship that's been provided is pretty crucial for our school. We're buying new volleyball gear, so volleyball nets, balls and the stands to attach the volleyball nets to the floor. New Zealand Carbon Farming sponsorship, we've used it to purchase some table tennis tables which uh, give our students an extra activity to be involved in during lunch times, allows them to, to keep active and enjoy their school day a little bit more. Thank you New Zealand Carbon Farming for giving us these tables. We've got some really good table tennis players in the school. I can see it actually growing into a slightly more competitive sport for our students as well. We'd just like to thank you from Tauranga New High School. See you. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah, feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this downtown apartment is the perfect first property. Okay. Our vendors have a new baby. They're moving on, so we're selling this today. Do I have any more bids? One bid here. Thank you. I've got a bid there. We've got one more here. Yes, we have one more bid. We have a bid here. Do we have any more final bids? This bid? isn't about just selling one on. property. It's about getting a better result for our clients. So, so we can help them with their next property, the one after that, and the one after that. New Zealand Carbon Farming for their support of the college and um, without the support we wouldn't be able to offer everything we do to the students so any funding we get is, is vital for what we can provide. Our students are in an area where money is tight um, and opportunities for them is, is minimal so creating more opportunities at school for our students to participate in sport is what we're wanting to do. Uh, we want to encourage as much participation in sport from as many people as possible so giving them opportunities and facilities at the college here is going to increase that for them. The funding will be used to make an outdoor volleyball court and to um, equip some of our sports equipment inside our gym. We focus a lot around the whole Tarvima 
uh, around the, the Hora, and sport is going to be a major part of that. Uh, kia ora koto. welcome back to New Zealand Ultimate Secretary Schools uh, Championship. We're here watching um, uh, Takapuna Grandma versus uh, Hillcrest High. Hillcrest High are currently leading eight to one at the halftime break. We're playing to um, we're playing to fifteen. Um, the team's just still talking strategy at the moment. Um, Mike, you were talking before about um, Te Wairua, uh, the spirit of the game, and how you. You like that as a parent? I, I do. I love it. Um, and the spirit of the game is, is crucial at all levels of play: school play, uh, uh, adult leagues, uh, internationally. And it's how we measure each other on spirit uh, um, about how well the other pl team plays. It's not just yeah, you know, they're a good bunch of guys or, or, or whatever, but it's um, how well the other team knows the rules how well the other team adheres to non-contact, their fair-mindedness. And we, we give them a, each person, each, each team a score for each game. And almost as important as winning the tournament is there is also a, um, a spirit prize that is uh, decided at the end of the tournament as well. That team that uh, wins the most spirit scores over the, over the, the, uh, the duration of the tournament. I, w I was uh, lucky enough to be at uh, 2016 in London where uh, New Zealand played at the World Champs. And, um, God, it's hard to match the, the quality that comes out of the numbers that play in countries like Canada and, and the USA. Um, but uh, Aotearoa New Zealand was up there for, they won the Spirit Award for the whole competition um, and immensely proud of that. Interesting. I've I've been to a number of uh, world championships, both both at an open level and an under twenty level and an under twenty four level, uh, both supporting and managing New Zealand teams. And New Zealand teams are world renowned for um, their high levels of spirit, often winning the spirit award uh, at, at those international competitions. So often we think of ourselves in, in Aotearoa as being uh, fair-minded and uh, giving everyone a, uh, what we used to say, a fair suck of the sav or uh, a fair go, if a you like. Go. A fair yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it bears, um, so, so the numbers don't lie that we, we are, we are a fair-minded country um, for whatever reason that is. So we are back live again, um, and Hillcrest are trying to sort of uh, get that disc, or Takapuna, are uh, looking to sort of get that uh, disc off their line. Hillcrest trying to pressure them into that corner. And I don't think, oh, it's a lovely throw by Finn. Uh, wasn't, was, was not a uh, backhand or a forehand, it was a, what we call, it wasn't a hammer, it was a, a, a scuba. Scuba? Yeah. Threw it out of the back of his hand. Coaches don't always like that throw in the wind. Let's see that. <laughs> Very well executed. So playing with confidence, the Hillcrest team. Now you might be able to uh, correct my pronunciation. Um, uh, Mark, your Tereo is uh, significantly uh, better than mine. Um, oh, I'd say marginally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will slip into my uh, s some bad habits. So what, what's the correct p pronunciation of, of Takapuna? I've always gone Takapuna. Takapuna. But um, really, pronunciation at most isn't important than the effort of... Um, of usage, right? Yeah. Um, and we thank uh, Maori TV, um, uh, Fakata uh, Maori, uh, and the other sponsors for putting together this package that enables us to to stream the the game because there's so many um, Fano and uh, friends and Hoa um, that aren't able 
to, to take t- time off and travel, and this enables them to, to almost be here. It does. That, that was a lovely throw uh, just outside the fingertips of Charlie Figgins there. Uh, lovely throw by uh, Harry to a sealer. Putting Hillcrest back into uh, right on their line again, so uh, same strategy has paid out. You'll notice there that uh, Finn threw that disc into the air uh, and at the wind quarter and took it right back to Finn. He can't catch his own throw unless the opposition uh, touches the disc. So he had to uh, move away from it. So Takapuna uh, have got that disc again. And what has happened there? Uh, timeout. What's what he calling a timeout? A well, timeout must have been called. So no doubt Takapuna are calling some sort of move. Camped on the Hillcrest uh, goal line. So they in a hot space for uh, looking to score. The coach there suggesting that perhaps a, a timeout is a good idea here. I think you're allowed two. Two, per per, yes. Each, each team is allowed to call two per half. I didn't see who called the last one. Takapuna uh, looks like quite a young team out there. I don't have their ages here in front of me, but uh, just looking at the uh, the size of, of, of the guys, they look to be a reasonably young team. Um, I, I know last year when we were here, the, the Takapuna team were very competitive. Uh, most of those players haven't returned. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that's because they have uh, matured and moved out of school. Um, so we might, might be able to call this a development team. And sometimes that happens. You'll get a group that will come through through a school who will play together and have an interest in ultimate together. Maybe they even started a primary school. And they'll move through and there'll be that strength within the school and suddenly they'll lose, you know, could lose half their team. That is the great thing being involved in, in youth sport uh, is that what's happening this year and who the... the the, the kings or queens of the of the mountain are next year you know it's a completely different uh, kettle of fish uh, players move on and uh, leave school and a new uh, lot come through one one team has uh, holiday year 13s mature uh, and another team next year has uh, more senior players that are uh, playing the game so yes it, it can be it's quite refreshing that you never get uh, constant domination you will get some teams that have good programs in the school, mm. um, and, and we see the same teams here uh, year after year. So you'll probably see those later on in the weekend. So number seven, Hugo Sweetman picking up that disc. So we'll see if we can work out what their play is that they're going to sort of um, work out what they're going to do on attack, hot on attack. Often what teams will do here is call it for one player. And number 13 scores there, Nick Mansell. So what generally happens there is that they'll call a, OK, we're going to get this disc to, uh, to Nick Mansell. And everyone else runs uh, lines to confuse the uh, opposition. And Nick Mansell comes through and gets the score. So great goal by uh, Takapuna. I think that brings them up to 2. Does that make it 8-2? Yes, I think so. Should be 9 2. 9 2, thank you. Uh, 46 minutes down, so another 10 minutes till uh, the soft cap. The game may go to 15, we'll see. Wind still blowing strongly from right to left. Um, number hit 7, so you've seen the team swap ends. Uh, so Takapuna now looking to throw that disc uh, into the wind. Uh, that's a good uh, handy throw, uh, makes halfway. And again, uh, we'll see Hillcrest just sauntering up to the disc. And there was a set play then. And the set play was that... Uh, the other handler the other took handler off, which was, took a, surprise. Off, which I was, was a surprise. I, I was looking for that vertical stack. The three other players that were lined up in the middle field, whether they sometimes they, they initiate from the front, from the back, I'm not seeing which one, and suddenly the handler takes off. It worked incredibly well. Just unfortunate, though, conditions, a little bit too difficult. Yeah, yeah, it didn't quite pull it down. 
That's a good pull into the wind. Uh, a good forehand throw. Sitting up nicely. Uh, couldn't quite take it down. There are a number of players going for it. So uh, uh, competing in the air. Nick Mansell didn't quite manage to sort of pull it down this time. But great, uh, great uh, um, height that he gained uh, attempting to get that disc. Sure what happened there? It must have been a stall out actually, so the disc has gone back to the previous throw. Uh, uh, the person must have got to 10. And oh, the 1-2 nice. has uh, nicely uh, paid off that time. And Finn uh, just reiterating, this is how you catch. You catch with two hands, not what I did, not dropping <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, he only caught it with one hand, oh. <laughs> But it was another score for... But if we watch it, watch it again, he was looking for that, wasn't he? He was, yes. That few, that nice throw, yeah, yeah. nice throw through there. Whereas the, so many times with, with players when they're learning, they're so concerned about the 10 count. They're looking in front of them for where the cuts are going to be mm. and not with that, I suppose, that uh, field vision. Yep, yep. Yeah, was, so an experienced player uh, won't be panicking. They will be looking uh, for the full 10 seconds if they, if they need it. Um, you see um, that, that, time, that catch. Uh, Finn was uh, uh, looking to catch that beautifully with two hands. Uh, so he had good technique, just didn't quite play off on that particular occasion. So thanks, Finn, for demonstrating that for us. <laughs> you could use that as an instructional yes, video. Yes, you could. And the right technique doesn't always uh, pay off, and usually because of the wind. Yeah, and sometimes it's just uh, you can't quite get close enough for two hands. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah, or the, the you know, yes, correct. But, but if you can, <laughs> so Hillcrest uh, calling a brick again, pulling it into that X mark, ten meters up from the end zone, and bringing the disc in from there. I think we're uh, you'll hear a hooter soon for the um, soft cap. Was it fifty minutes? Was it okay? Here's very close to that uh, that soft cap. There it is. There. So that was the hooter going. Uh, didn't quite manage to sort of convert that. So that's the soft cap. So what that means is that we finish this point and then add one to the higher score and that's what we're playing to. So when we complete this point, it'll either be 10-3 if Takapuna score, in which case you'll, there'll be a gain to 11. Or if Hillcrest score at this point, and it's 11-2, it'll be a game to 12. Okay, so it can be a bit of getting used to the uh, the soft cap uh, arrangement. Uh, Takapuna back in possession and looking to uh, hoof that down into the corner. Uh, pulled down by uh, 11 Finn. Oh, I think possibly a cramp. Yes, looks like a cramp to me. Uh, so their main uh, um, cutter, I think that was number one, Tana, Tana Giles. And plain savage, as this tournament goes on, that's yes. going to take a toll on their bodies. That, that will take a toll on their bodies. I'm not sure. <laughs> they won't be able to do anything other than if, he, if, if uh, Tana has to go off. Then uh, Hillcrest can do nothing other than um, they've got no subs. They can do nothing other than playing with four players, which is unfortunate. Mm. No doubt they were. Uh, I, I'm not sure of the exact circumstances for the team, um, but I certainly know from from experience. Uh, um, not this year, but my teams last year we had uh, three pull out with COVID last year, uh, the, the day before. Oh. And one broken hand the week before. So we lost four players from our, um, our boys team last year, just in the last few days. So I'm not sure if Hillcrest have been through that over the last uh, few days, losing players. It'd be interesting to know the backstory there. Mm. Plus, yeah, and, and whatever injuries that, that may appear. I was watching a um, uh, Div 2 game, game with uh, Groot from Auckland. Um, I think they had five players go down in one game. Yes. Yep. Various injuries because 
These are hard, hard games. It can be a brutal sport. Mm. Uh, not from the contact, because we... Um, ultimate is played non-contact. So that's not... I remember play, I played uh, indoor netball at some stage uh, in, in my 30s. And I, I was hugely surprised at the amount of contact that, yes. that happened in that game. For a supposedly... For a non-contact sport. For a sport. non-contact sport. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is not like netball. Uh, ultimate is played where you need to avoid contact. Uh, you should be avoiding contact uh, and, and any contact is is frowned upon, especially any dangerous play. Um, so Tana is back on his feet again. Uh, be interesting to see how that progresses over the weekend or over the next uh, day about how he uh, uh, keeps playing. In fact, how the Hillcrest team keeps playing. So Hillcrest back in position on their own goal line. Don't forget the south cap has gone, so there'll be uh, the game is reaching a conclusion. Nice little throw, forehand throw up the line. Goes to fake backhand. Good defence, trying yeah, to force very him onto his good defence. Yes, uh, through a, um, a a coach pass that oh, good throw forehand into the wind, but. Beautifully come through by uh, Harry to Asila, forcing that turnover. And Harry is, in fact, throwing it down the other end. Beautifully nice throw. caught by. Here eight, come the cats, both Charlie sides. Figgins. Thank you, Charlie, saving us. And lovely conversion by Takapuna. And the, the catcher in the end, the scorer of that goal was number seven, Hugo Sweetman. So. Takapuna will be very happy with that. That makes, takes it up to, what was it, 10-3 now. So with the soft cap gone, it's a game to 11. And there's no actual hard cap, is there? No, no. So we keep playing until one team gets to 11. Um, you'll have to say that uh, under these conditions that, that Hillcrest would be favoured to do that, especially starting off this next point with the wind at their backs. They have to just score. Uh, they start with position, so they just need to convert that into a goal. So Takapuna uh, still have a chance. They could, uh, but they've got to get the next, uh, what's that, eight points in a row. So the disc went out, but um, Hillcrest will be looking to that take that disc where it went out, which was about the halfway line, I think. Generally, you don't want to be playing uh, next to the sideline, so I would imagine that the first pass that uh, that Finn looks is to centre it across to uh, Will. Let's see if that's what they actually do. <laughs> Hard to throw good throws from the sideline. Looking to throw it forehand, and in fact, he looks to centre it. Couldn't quite connect with his uh, his handler, and picked up by Harry again. Harry's looking to throw forehand, uh, but we're about throwing it forehand into that win. Oh, but he gets a lovely throw right across to the other uh, other side to Hugo. Hugo is looking to get it back to uh, Harry again, playing on the sideline. Very hard to again, as I said before, very hard to score from there. So yes, centering it back into the middle. Oh, and a lovely throw. Oh, two bites at it. Two bites at it, uh, but uh, in the end, Tana managed to come through. I think there might be a call there, perhaps a foul call that uh, Tana made contact as he was running through. Uh, I think he's walking off. Or is it Tana that's down again injured? Just taking a uh, time to get back up. No, it's Hillcrest uh, disc again. Just accepting that Tana is uh, perhaps um, not playing at 100%. But again, great anticipation from Harry to Asila. Uh, forcing that turnover and a lovely throw off the line by Harry getting it further down the line Stop that roll So I imagine that uh, Finn and Harry will be looking to do a 1-2 or well, Finn and Will Didn't quite come off for them perhaps a little bit too rushed And Takapuna back with uh, the disc in hand again Playing into the wind. 
and the wind you can see pushing that disc down into the ground. Yep, Harry, the, uh, indicating uh, the strength of the wind. Thank you, Harry. Nice one two at the back there between the two handlers, and it looked the same again. The disc pushed a little bit too far in front of him to uh, pull that down. Oh, and Takapuna looking to do exactly the same with that one two. Nice throw, big gainer up the field to number 13. That's Nick Mansell. Uh, but Hillcrest uh, running through on the defence. They're still in a good position for Takapuna down this end of the field. Hillcrest got a long way to sort of to go and score. Not sure what Hillcrest will be doing here if they're going to continue that one two down the sideline. It well, looks like they are so far. And they're doing very well at it. Oh, that's a nice combination. That was a nice combination. I think that's game. So a scorer of that last point was oh, uh, number 17, I think it was, Nico Bula. Bula. So that's 11-3, that, that's game uh, to Hillcrest. And you'd have to say that Hillcrest have uh, worked effectively to their strength of using their two very experienced players and, and running the game completely through them. So well done to Hillcrest. Takapuna, uh, a young team. Um, yeah, they'll, uh, hopefully the conditions are set to improve significantly tomorrow. Uh, so it could be a completely different game if these two teams met uh, with little wind. Mm. So both teams now, now will get into most likely their own spirit circles and decide um, uh, who they're going to nominate in the other team for most valuable player. Yep. And um, uh, so that's MVP and um, uh, most sporting player. MSB. Correct, and, and they'll talk through any spirit issues they have. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's it from us. We'll be back at about 3.20 with Hutt Valley High, um, I think. Is it uh, through Takagrama and the women's? See you then.